following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Boatest.com, and today I'm on the Greenline 40 Hybrid. Now, the hybrid features of this boat have a lot to do with extending the range, lessening the maintenance, and usability on your main engines, but there are also some aspects of it that apply to the features on the boat. Let's go over them as I do a full features review. The cockpit presents plenty of open space, 6 feet 4 inches fore and aft, 7 feet 4 inches between the two seats, 11 feet 9 inches forward. The standard decking is a non-skid. Here we have the teak package that goes up the side decks just to midships and beyond that it gets to the standard non-skid. The cap rails are also teak and they can be swapped out for a composite material. Now there are seats to both corners. This one has storage underneath it. This one has shore power connectivity and there's a basin inside to hold the shore power cord. If you want to increase your seating and your storage capabilities, there's an optional bench seat that can go in this position and it'll allow you to sit both forward and aft facing when we lower this transom platform. And you can walk out to the transom to both sides of that bench seat. With this platform in the lowered position, it gives us nearly an additional three feet of extra space to the cockpit. Now this is not a hydraulically actuated platform. It operates by having this rope connected to a winch underneath the deck. And in that manner, if we have to or want to, we can operate it manually. There are two huge storage compartments in the deck, and when I say huge, I mean it. Take a look at this. That's a 10-foot foldable rib. There are boarding doors to both port and starboard in the cockpit, very conveniently located. There's a cleat for the stern line, but as a spring line cleat, it's not so well positioned. I'd like to see one further forward so that we don't have a line going across the gate. As we make our way to the bow, there are grab handles at the entry to the side deck. There's protection overhead as well as from the side of the 14-inch wide deck. Rail height is 35 inches. The transition from teak to non-skid occurs just ahead of midships. There's a grab handle at the steps, and as we step up, the rail height drops to 26 inches with a 6-inch tow rail surrounding the bow. Here we have a lounge that measures 7 feet by 4 feet 5 inches. Beverage holders are to the sides, and there's a pop-up bimini that does not interfere with visibility from the helm while deployed. To the sides, I noticed that the side windows are recessed so that there's a bit of a visor over them created from the roof of the trunk cabin. The cockpit is protected from the overhead, 6 feet 11 inches off the deck, and we can further increase the functionality and versatility of the area by sliding open this door, releasing catch and bringing up this window, Take a look at this. Out come two supports, and then this drops down, and now we blend the inside with the outside, and the galley can better serve as a serving area for the cockpit. The interior is built around a theme of an open and airy environment with windows that start up very high and come down low for great visibility. That, combined with the overhead clearance of 6 feet 3 inches, really give this an open atmosphere. The layout starts with the galley aft, Settee wrapping around a table over onto the port side and to starboard. Counter space with additional storage. Let's take a look at each one of these areas individually. We'll start with the aft galley. The galley features start with plenty of open counter space, especially with the extended section opened up. There's a two burner induction cooktop and Greenline will provide the cookware that's compatible with that induction cooktop. There's a sink recessed into the Corian counter. Storage both above and below microwave and to the opposite side is a stand-up refrigerator freezer. Here's an interesting feature. The trash receptacle is recessed into the counter. You just put your trash around this ring, fill it up when it's full, tie it up, drop it down, and then it's accessible from a hatch on the outside of the boat so you don't have to carry the trash through your boat. It even takes full-size trash bags. But to the port hand side there's L-shaped seating wrapping around a solid wood table. The upholstery can be either vinyl or leather. The table can be either on a fixed pedestal or a high-low so that we can convert this area into a berth. And of course, it's not fixed to the deck so that we can remove it and expose the engine hatches. However, once it is in this position, we can secure it to the deck. Over to the starboard side, there's plenty of storage that also includes bottle storage, open counter space, and a TV on an electric lift. And I have to say, not only are these seats extremely comfortable, but I'm also impressed with the visibility here. The windows come up so high and down so low that I've got great sight lines from the seated position all the way out to the horizon, and that gives a good comfort level to your guests that might not be so inclined toward boating. Taking a look at the fit and finish, these are fabricated from golden teak. White oak and walnut is also available. Beautiful joinery work. And take a look at the leather pulls on all the cabinetry. 
Now let's take a look at the accommodations on this part where we have two staterooms in one head. The master stateroom is fully forward. There's six feet, five inches of headroom. Windows are above providing natural light. Plus there are two opening port lights, one to each side. There's a single berth that can be split open to form two twins. Hanging lockers are to both sides. Plus, I like how Greenline makes good use of the space just below the windows for additional storage. There's additional storage underneath the mattresses. Just to the forward bulk, it is a 24 inch flat screen TV. The beautiful fit and finish continues with this nice joinery work. And take a look at these leather handles. The door is held open by a hook and latch, and it serves fine, but I'd like to see a magnet instead. But take a look at these handles. You're not going to snag anything on these. Just to the starboard side is the door to the head, and this has a separate shower, plus it has a separate entrance, so it can serve double duty as a day head. Now, the guest stateroom entrance is just across the companionway from the day head entrance. This one has the same high overhead, natural light pouring in from a side window. There's also an opening port light. There are two single berths that slide together to form a queen. A seat is just in front, as well as a hanging locker. And again, there's storage just underneath the windows. Plus, we have the ventilation not only from the opening port light, but from these windows up above. Now, I said before that the hybrid application has aspects that are applicable to the features of the boat. That mostly pertains right here. Look at, we're at 97% on the batteries. This boat spent four days at a boat show. We've been on it all day with one of the three air conditioners running, all of the lights and the refrigeration, and we're still at 97%. That's because we have six 300 watt solar panels on the roof that are putting a charge into the batteries and it's a beautiful sunny South Florida day. So we can keep this up for months at a time without ever having to go to a marina, without ever having to connect to shore power. We can also drive the boat on that power, but that's another video. Be sure to look for it. For now, that's my full features inspection of the Greenline 40 Hybrid. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.